We all know reliable pedals are a critical component to bikepacking and cycling in general, yet they're often overlooked when it comes to maintenance or service, and the last thing you want to experience on a bikepacking adventure is pedal failure, especially since it's easy to prevent with a little TLC ahead of time. Today I'll focus on Crank Brothers clipless pedals because that's what I use for bikepacking. They're fantastic for shedding mud and snow, and having the ability to service them in the field is a huge bonus for me. First I'll take you through the service procedure with the Crank Brothers refresh kit and then I'll go through some tips for bikepacking field repair. Even if you don't use Crank Brothers pedals, the basic principles of examining and servicing your pedals translate no matter what system you use, whether it's SPD or Speedplay or anything else on the market. And regardless of your pedal choice, you should always have a repair strategy just in case they fail while you're out bikepacking. Just a reminder before I get started, it's always a great idea to install new cleats a couple weeks before going out on a bikepacking adventure so you have enough time to break them in. You don't want to be like also remember, always bring a spare cleat and a couple cleat bolts just in case. Brake rotor bolts can suffice for a cleat bolt in a pinch, and your rotor can handle a missing bolt temporarily. But the rounded head is not ideal, so it's nice to have proper cleat bolts. Another option is to replace one bolt on each rotor with a cleat bolt ahead of time so you don't have to think about it. Just saying. How do you know if your pedals need service? When you spin them, they should feel fairly smooth. Any crunchiness or binding, uh-uh. I also like to pull them back and forth laterally. Some slight play is normal, but if there's excessive movement at the pedal body and the spindle, then your bearings are probably toast and it's time for some service. For this, you'll need to purchase a Crank Brothers pedal refresh kit. I'll put a link in the description below. Again, I'm servicing Eggbeater 11s today. I've got an all-day Epic coming up, so I want to make sure they're dialed. But the refresh kit also works on other versions of egg beaters, as well as candies, mallets, and 50-50s made from 2010 to present. For the record, I usually prefer candy 1s or 7s without the titanium spindle for bikepacking. I like a little bit of a platform in case I have problems clipping in. I feel the standard spindle is a little stronger and worth the slight weight penalty while bikepacking. The process is pretty much identical on all the pedals, except torque settings might be slightly different. Also, some pedals might require a razor blade and a T25 to remove the pedal body, but I won't need any of that for the egg beater. All of the torque specs and specific instructions for each pedal come in the refresh kit. Tools. The refresh kit includes a specific Crank Brothers service tool, which is a metal rod. Other than that, you need to have the following. A flathead screwdriver if you have the old style bladed end caps like I do. If you have the newer end caps with the hex fitting, you'll need a 6mm Allen wrench. You'll also need an 8mm Allen wrench. A socket wrench with an 8mm socket, a 10mm socket, and a 14mm socket. A hammer, a clean rag or paper towels, and some grease. In addition, you don't absolutely need them, but it's nice to have a torque wrench with a 6mm Allen bit, degreaser, and some long Q-tips. And it's always a good idea to wear some rubber gloves and eye protection. Let's get started. Bust open the refresh kit and you'll find the following. Two spindle nuts, two enduro cartridge bearings, two IGUS LL glide bearings, two inner seals, two outer seals, and two end caps. You'll also find a little baggie with four O-rings, two two millimeter outer bushings, and two four millimeter inner bushings. For egg beaters, I won't need anything from that little baggie, so I just put it aside. You can keep the pedals on the bike for this service, but I prefer to take them off and lay everything out on my bench. The first order of business is to take off the top cap. Use a flat screwdriver for pre-2015 pedals like mine, or a six millimeter Allen wrench for the newer versions. Once the cap is off, put an eight millimeter Allen wrench in the spindle to keep it from spinning, and use an eight millimeter socket to loosen and remove the nylock spindle nut. Once the nut is off, you can remove the pedal body from the spindle and the cartridge bearing will be free to remove. It should slide right out, but if not, you can pop a six millimeter Allen wrench through from the other side to push it out. With the pedal body off, you can then remove the inner and outer seal from the spindle. Pedals made before 2015 didn't come with these seals, so you might not have them. Now is also a good time to inspect your spindle for pitting, scoring, or other damage, and to give it a nice cleaning with some degreaser and a rag or paper towels. If your spindle is badly pitted or scored, you might be better off replacing it. The last thing you want is your spindle snapping off while bikepacking. If this happens, there's not much you can do other than hike your bike out. This actually happened to me on a ride after neglecting to service my pedals for over 4,000 miles. This also happened to my buddy Blake on the Comstock 550 bikepacking race. He was forced to pull the plug and hike his bike 20 miles back to civilization. He's the first to admit it could have been prevented. So allow this to be your Smokey the Bear public service announcement. Only you can prevent pedal failure. Next, I like to push out the Igus glide bearing from the pedal body. Place the inner side of the pedal body on top of the 14 millimeter socket and insert the metal rod from the outer side of the pedal body. It'll be a snug fit and you might need to jiggle it a bit to get it all the way through. Once you've got it in place, tap out the glide bearing with your hammer. 
I also take this time to spray some degreaser in the pedal body and wipe out the grime with Q-tips and paper towels. Once it's all clean and dry, we can install the new Igus glide bearing. Line up the bearing on the pedal body and make sure it's nice and straight. Then use a 10 millimeter socket and your hammer to tap it in. It should fit nice and flush. Now I like to put the new inner and outer seals on the spindle. Note, they are directional and should look like this when correctly installed. Once you've got that handled, put a thin layer of grease between the two seals and on the spindle itself, but not the spindle threads. Then we're gonna slide the pedal body back over the spindle. Grab the new cartridge bearing and fit it over the spindle and push it down into place so the threads on the spindle are accessible. Next, we thread on the nylock nut and use the eight millimeter socket wrench to snug it up. Again, putting an eight millimeter Allen wrench in the spindle keeps it from spinning and makes life easier. If you have a torque wrench, tighten the spindle nut to four Newton meters. Otherwise, snug it up with your socket wrench, careful not to over tighten. Lastly, install the new end cap with a six millimeter Allen wrench. Install this dry since it comes with blue thread locker on it. If you have a torque wrench, tighten to three Newton meters or else tighten gently by hand. Three Newton meters is not much force at all. That's all there is to it. Repeat the process on your second pedal. They should be buttery smooth and good as new. Don't forget when you reinstall them to use anti-seize on the titanium threads. With regular alloy spindles, waterproof grease is fine. Also, if you have trouble telling your right pedal from your left and you're worried about cross threading, you can always look at thread direction. Threads going up to the right are traditional, meaning it's your right pedal. Threads going up to the left are reverse threaded, meaning it's your left pedal. But there's a super easy way to tell the difference on Crank Brothers pedals. A lot of people don't know, but they put a small indentation on the left pedal to differentiate between the two. Even with my pedals freshly serviced, I still keep spare parts in my bikepacking kit. I carry two extra spindle nuts and two enduro cartridge bearings. They're tiny and weigh next to nothing. The most common issue you'll come across in the field is a worn cartridge bearing. This can allow the spindle and spindle nut to slide through the pedal body and become separated. If this happens and you have the spare parts, it's no biggie to fix. If you don't have the spare parts, it'll be a big pain in your backside. If this happens in the field and you have your spare parts, follow these steps. Use the six millimeter Allen wrench on your multi-tool to remove the end cap from your pedal body. Then slide the pedal body over the spindle. Pop on the new cartridge bearing. Then thread on the new spindle nut. I don't carry an eight millimeter socket or a socket wrench, so I use the needle nose pliers for my Leatherman squirt to snug the nut as tight as possible. Then just put your end cap on and snug it back up with your six millimeter Allen wrench. This will do you fine until you can properly tighten the spindle nut later on. I hope this video gives you the confidence to service your pedals as well as the peace of mind to know you can repair them when bikepacking if necessary. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. I put up new content every week, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if there's any specific how-to videos you're interested in, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Until then, ride bikes, drink beer, live happy. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, drink beer, live happy.